Hi guys, we're continuing with dress selection and design. We're gonna keep going. Uh, we're at, we're at individuality in dress. Um, optical illusions of line. Five women watched a mannequin float across the showroom displaying a new gossamer gown. All five lost in admiration completely identified themselves with the model. One woman was tall and angular, one short and stout, um, one top heavy with veiny feet and ankles, one quite substantial from the hips down. Only one who was beautifully proportioned could wear the dress displayed with style, but all five bought it, one success for catastrophe. Perhaps each of the four women who bought an illusion instead of a dress faced, her, um, faced herself in a full-length mirror when she reached home. If so, the awakening was cool. But perhaps the four never found out the bitter truth. Perhaps all four wore the dress believing they created an impression of floating lightness. Their friends knew better for they saw the five women as they really were. Few of us can afford such expensive mistakes. We owe it to ourselves to take stock of our assets and liabilities with equal candor. Mentoring and analyzing your own figure uh, prepares you to um, watch a mannequin in a beautiful dress, admire the dress objectively, and yet reject it if it is wrong for your proportions and style. Feeling close objectively is the first step toward buying rationally, toward choosing suitably, um, suitable becoming garments instead of illusionary, illus illusory ones. Illusory. <laughs> illusory. Adapting costume lines to personal requirements um, requires completely on familiarity with figure proportions and carriage, on understanding the importance of silhouette, and on the relationship of structural lines to silhouette. The complexity of adaptation defies a simple solution. Um, becoming yes, requires a scaling costume to figure size, a requisite for a woman regardless of proportions, restoring a semblance of balance. Um, to an out of proportion figure and adapting costume to personal style and age. The most subtle of selection problems. Um, true age barriers have been largely broken down and now clothing is relied primarily on the basis of figure, size, and carriage. Still, some clothes quite obviously are intended for specific age groups. For example, a school girlish. Um, junior Miss Dance dress is a far cry from a figure defining drape dress suitable for an older, more sophisticated woman with a fine figure. And neither is pr appropriate for a middle aged woman whose figure and age require more d dignity than the junior Miss and less demanding lines than um, a figure model drape dress. Designers of mass produced ready to wear um, plan their designs for standard sizes and proportions, and designers, of course, express their conceptions of um, public taste and are not guided by individual differences in taste. They could hardly do otherwise. Women dress becomingly according to their ability to find apparel that suits their personal style and fits reasonably well. Intricate alterations in all likelihood will destroy um, the style as well as increase the cost excessively. Fortunately for the appearance of American women, um, factory designers um, are past masters at recognizing lines and cuts that are generally wearable and can be altered with comparative ease. They use these cuts again and again, modifying them each season to complete uh, to create 
an impression of novelty as the fashions change. Such familiar cuts are sh as shoulder yokes, short jackets of the bolero, or even tight sh shirt waist, coat dresses, uh, two-piece dresses, record skirts, hip bone length jackets, fitted and boxy, generally becoming and easy to alter that um, they become perennial favorites. They're never high fashion or even out of them. Um, Extreme or high style designs are generally found only in custom clothes. Clothes designed especially for individual customers who want one of a kind of exclusiveness above all else and are able to pay for it. The woman who can design and make her own clothes also can have individuality at a much smaller price. Too often, choosing becoming clothes is interpreted to mean only correcting figure faults a narrow, oversimplified view. Thus, a student finding a dress often discards every smart line in her struggle to correct a real or imagined figure fault. The design loses smartness, and although it may succeed in disguising the fault, it fails dismally as a dress. Every successful garment must have smart styling as well as lines suitable for the figure. If dress and person um, cannot be harmonized without loss of style, another design should be sought. Before tackling the twofold problem of choosing lines that are smartly styled and individually becoming as well, let us investigate the general behavior of lines, the illusions they create. So it says repeated and broken verticals, exaggerate height, and thinness by repetition, shortness. Documents by contradiction. Skirt paneling, a dominant center panel holds attention at the center, bottoms the figure, and um, a center seam reduces hip width. Side seams throw flare at the sides. Um, so this broadens the figure apparently. Um, the center panel. Um, that's the center panel bringing attention to the center. Uh, this reduces hip width, a seam in the center